when you get up on the side of these granite strewn mountains, you can actually see right out across the wilderness in a short tree like this. What amazes me is how these trees actually tap their roots right down into the soil and jut straight up out of the rock. Quite amazing, really. And there's a lot of shelter here for all sorts of animals. From insects to amphibians, all the way up to reptiles and your large mammals. Birds too, crikey, there's a lot of birds. <laughs> oh, now I'll bet you there's something seeking refuge in that cave. They're using the shelter and shade of these big granite boulders and these fern overhangs to escape the sunlight. These are hawk moths, two of them. You can see this one fluttering its wings there. That's a nervous reaction for when I came along. And this one's all propped and poised on the granite boulder. You're all right. Come on, hawk moth. Oh, oh, oh. They're very uninclined to fly during the day. Settle down now. Look at the beautiful moth. Big. You can see why they call them hawk moths. Huge, big wingspan. As big as a small hawk. But there are bigger ones, even bigger than this. I better put him back up here. He doesn't like the sunlight. Here you go, mate. Here you stick on your rock. There you go. Have a look at these over here. Rhinoceros beetles. Hi, guys. How you going? I see you girls there. Come on. Oh, you're using your Andy Predator device. Here's another one here. Listen. Hear that? Come on. Are you hissing? <laughs> that hissing is supposed to help them against predators. When a predator comes along, they hiss and they make themselves sound really awful and really ugly. Just like that. And um, then the predator goes, whoa, what is that? Which gives them enough time to walk away, or in actual fact, they've got wings. Like most beetles, underneath these hard shell-like structures there are her wings, but they won't fly during the day. They're predominantly nocturnal. And they'll come into these trees and aggregate, probably as a mating response. This big bloke here, he'd be looking at these girls wanting to mate with them. Why wouldn't you? They're very cute. You can see right on the front feet there, those hooks. See those hooks? That enables them to climb. Well, settle down, sweetheart. You're a funny girl. I might put you back in the tree so as I can talk about your big sister. Come on, you're all right. I hear you. There you go. You climb up there. Now you can see those hooks on the front and then what they've got is they've got very powerful digging-like structures on those front claws which is enabling them to get right down into compost you can see right on the front of her head is her antenna what are you doing Dopey? you're hanging by your claws incredible claws antenna right on the front of her head very little head and they eat young bark rhinoceros beetles Right in the bottom of our valley is a permanent watercourse that holds a very special reptile for me, Terry and Suey. So we're going to have to park, unload the boat, go and see if we can find them. Come on, Sue. Oh. Come on, Suey. Suey up. Get up. There's the girl. Whoa, steady, mate. You right? Yep. Terry and I have had many, many years of experience dealing with reptiles, predominantly snakes. And one of my fortes, one of my expertises, is dealing with venomous snakes. It's very important to remember, when you see Terry and I with venomous snakes, don't do what we do. 
Always be careful. Always stand back and look at a distance. You're going to stay right there. It's hard to see, really hard to see. But he's right here in the reeds. Now this is Tropodecus carinatus. Very commonly accused of being a tiger snake. Now this one's only a baby. You stay right there, Suey. So he's not real good with these snakes because they are fast and they're super toxic. If you get bitten, you've got to have tiger snake anti -venine. Of course, tiger snakes are one of the more... Terry, give me a bushy stick, mate. Okay. Tiger snakes are one of the more venomous snakes in the world. You're all right, mate. You're all right. They get really grumpy really quick. Is this something bushy or not? Just drop it down in front of me and then I can tell you, mate, I can't take my eyes off this snake. There's two. That's good. That... Oh, oh, oh. There, great. Now we can have a look at your little fella. Now we can see those stripes. What a strikingly beautiful little snake. The thing that sets these out amongst other venomous snakes in Australia is that they're arboreal. They can climb trees. And he's an ambush predator. What he's doing is he's sitting in these reeds waiting for frogs. When they're little like this, frogs are one of their main food sources. When they grow a little bigger, they get into rodents. They love to eat mice and even small rats. Super toxic venom, front fang. You wouldn't want to take a whack off one this small either. He'd give you enough of, enough of a bite to knock you. In fact, he'd pert near kill me. Beautiful little snake, isn't he? It's the rough scaled snake. Interesting scalation. They've got rough or keeled scales, which makes it good for them swimming in the water, but also to grip on branches and trees. Oh, 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 problem. Look at him. He's beautiful. Looks like you've been eating plenty of frogs too, mate. Have you? Hey? All right, I'll let you go back in your reeds. Yeah, buddy. Don't they blend into their environment? Those black stripes, they're actually becoming a part of these reeds. And as they move in the wind, so does the snake. Frog goes past, whammo, envenomate, bloop, and swallow them down. Beautiful. And they grow up to about three feet. You can see why occasional people get bitten by them here in southeast Queensland. It's because they lay in these shrubs, very still. People fall on them, whack, take a hit. They're a very non-aggressive species. Let me show you what he's been eating. Now, first you have to get your hands wet. Yeah. It's always important not to handle frogs with dry hands because they absorb everything through their skin, including any toxins that may be on our hands. Now, you're going to have to help me wrangle these. Okay, go. This is what our friend has been eating. Come back. Hold up. They're called rocket frogs for good reason. There he is. He's a little rocket frog. This is about the size of the frog that the snake would be eating. And because they boing so fast, boing, the snake's got to lie in wait in order to catch him. He doesn't have a hope of chasing him down. Now, this little cutie, this little guy is called a puddle bonk. And he's called that because he bonks so loud. He makes a loud bonk sound. So that's why he's called that. And he's got very pretty. Whoa! <laughs> he's got very pretty whoa, legs. Come here, little fatty. <laughs> That's why they call them pobble bongs, because they're fat and they go bonk, bonk. It's true. He's got these pretty colors on his legs. There, now see, that's all I wanted to do. And a really fat little tummy, so it's easy to tell them. Now, he would be safe from such a small snake. But when the snake's full grown, the pobble bonk is going to have to watch out. You bet. Here you go, pobble bonk. Want to go back in the water, buddy? Oh, bonk. There you go. Bye.